From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's broadcast and digital network and Troy campuses around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. We're glad you joined us for this look at what's happening in and around Troy University. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Well, a man who was deeply involved with the search for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq spoke on Troy's campus, Montgomery campus, this week as a part of a new partnership with the Alabama World Affairs Council. Jordan Nelson has the details from our Montgomery News Bureau. Troy University's Montgomery campus partnered with the Alabama World Affairs Council, bringing all council events to the campus. We're really excited about this partnership that Troy University now has with the Alabama World Affairs Council. It's a natural fit. The World Affairs Council is engaged with promoting awareness of international relations and uh, worldwide international and security issues. Troy is Alabama's international university. The presentation, Africa and the U.S., past and present, focuses on the diplomatic relationship between the United States and Africa from the perspective of former Ambassador Joseph Wilson. I'm going to be talking principally about uh, both uh, Africa, but also about diplomacy uh, in general and statecraft. Um, while most, a lot of my career was in Africa, most of my career was, uh, I was involved in the uh, diplomacy of conflict. Wilson says that one thing he wants listeners to take away from his presentation is how directly the relationship between the United States and Africa affects U.S. citizens. Um, I think people need to understand um, that uh, sort of African growth will benefit everybody. Um, it will open up um, uh, commercial lines uh, that are no, not currently open. There needs to be a greater effort to harmonize the various commercial and customs and duties um, uh, organizations. The next Alabama World Council event will be an international security seminar on September 29th. In Montgomery, Jordan Elston, Troy, Trojan Vision News. In 2019, Alabama will turn 200. The state is kicking off a three-year bicentennial celebration starting next year. In this past week, some Troy residents got the chance to help with Troy's part in the event. Conley Gilmore explains. The city of Troy held an informational meeting Thursday to discuss Alabama's upcoming 200th birthday. Meetings like this one are being held all over the state to get cities and towns involved in the statewide celebration. Today it was a great uh, afternoon, early evening to meet in Troy with uh, members of the community who are interested in history and culture and uh, talking about celebrating the Bicentennial, which is going to be here before we know it. Troy Mayor Jason Reeves is excited about the possibility of Troy being a part of the Bicentennial activities. Well, I, I hope we'll, uh, everybody will get excited about the 200th anniversary uh, of the state of Alabama, uh, the bicentennial. Uh, I think it's unique that they're doing it over uh, really a three-year period from the time Alabama became a territory. We've got a lot of rich history in Alabama and in Troy. Reeves also hopes that the city will be able to incorporate its own birthday celebration into the statewide festivities. One thing that I would like to, to see us do is our 175th anniversary will be during this three years. So Troy will turn 175 in 2018. So I hope we can incorporate that birthday in with the bicentennial and just get, get people interested in looking at what a, what a unique history we have here in our state. And history is an aspect that one community member hopes is focused on during bicentennial activities. I would like the history aspect of, of this celebration here in, in Troy, Alabama. I would like to get the children involved in any activities that are going to, that are going to be taking place here in Troy and Pike County. Uh, I believe it's important that the, the youth and the children here in the county uh, understand the history of Alabama. For more information on how to get involved in the Alabama Bicentennial Celebration, visit www.alabama200.com. Conley Gilmore, Troy Trojan Vision News. On Thursday, Troy University's Hall School of Journalism taught lessons to a younger group of students as middle and high schoolers from across the state were on campus for the annual J-Day. Samantha Charles has the details. Over 560 middle and high school students from around the state of Alabama attended this year's Journalism Day, making it the largest J-Day ever put on by Troy University's Hall School of Journalism and Communication. J-Day is a journalism high school workshop. We invite students from all over the state of Alabama to come and play journalism with us for a day. 
this year in particular, we have the largest J Day ever here at Troy today. Students in attendance went to various workshops with topics ranging from media law, be it uh, news writing, be it putting together a television news story, uh, anchoring, radio, public affairs, public relations. Every aspect of journalism that you can think of, we've got it here today for them. Besides attending workshops, some of the aspiring journalists got the chance to take a seat behind the anchor desk, read off of a teleprompter, and see what it would be like to be a professional news anchor. I had the opportunity of being able to get on camera and be one of the sports newscasters, basically read the teleprompter and be able to practice and actually see what real news anchors do. And as for why some students keep coming back. It's a really good school and I want to get a lot more experience. Sports broadcasting, sports reporting because it's been my dream since I was a kid. I felt that it would give me an opportunity to be able to do or have hands-on experience with what I would personally like to do when I get older. Hopefully become a news anchor on TV. Samantha Charles, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Troy University's Hall School of Journalism and Communication offers its students a variety of opportunities to learn through both classroom instruction and hands-on experience, like what you see on Troy Trojan Vision News every day. However, from time to time, the students get a chance to hear directly from individuals working in the field, as they did this week from a longtime Montgomery broadcaster. Samantha Charles has that story. Some Troy University broadcast journalism students heard from a man who could be their boss someday. Glenn Halbrooks, the news director for Alabama News Network in Montgomery, visited the broadcast news writing class on Wednesday morning, giving tips on how to break into a business that he says he's always wanted to be a part of. This is what I always wanted to do when I started, uh, even in elementary school. I did a little student newscast when I was in fourth grade, and it just really appealed to me, all the excitement of the equipment and the lights and the scripts and the uncertainty of doing something live, and is it gonna work or not work out? And you never know what the day's gonna bring. Um, no two days are exactly alike, and that's what makes this field especially exciting for people who want that bit of uncertainty in their lives and love living on the edge a little bit. As a broadcast professional in this area, Hallbrooks recognizes the benefits that Troy University's program offers to its students through hands-on experience. I think Troy University really takes the practical side of journalism very seriously. Uh, it's one thing to talk about textbook learning and theory, and that's important, but what Troy does specifically is give students the tools that they need in order to develop the skills that they need that will get them the jobs that they want in newsrooms all across the country. And when these students graduate and are trying to impress news directors out there, Hall Brooks has this advice. Never give up. Uh, it is tough. Uh, there are a lot more uh, applicants out there than there are jobs, but because Troy University does such an exceptional job in preparing its students, they usually rise to the top of any job openings that are out there, particularly in the state of Alabama, where Troy's reputation is very well known. But still, it does take patience. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll see how some Troy University students use their lunch break to bring awareness to relationship abuse. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Abusive relationships are not necessarily a topic brought up during lunch conversation. However, that was the case Wednesday afternoon as students discussed the topic at the bi-weekly Talk of Troy. Conley Gilmore has the story. 
The Talk of Troy, led by Troy Voice of Justice Group, was held on Wednesday where students were involved in a discussion about dating violence and unhealthy relationships. Uh, we had Talk of Troy, so that's our discussion series that's sponsored by my office, the Office of Civic Engagement, and um, it was led by Troy Voice of Justice around domestic abuse and violence and uh, strategies to address or prevent that. The students involved in the discussion were very knowledgeable about unhealthy relationships, but some studies show that others may not be. I'm really surprised that so many people in the room knew uh, what an unhealthy relationship looked like because the statistic is that 57% of college students report that it's hard to identify what is considered an unhealthy relationship. And many students on campuses around the country experience dating violence in college. So one in three women are going to be uh, victims of relationship violence at some point in college, uh, and one in four men. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's, it's fairly prevalent, and uh, I think it's, it's a responsibility for all of us to have that conversation and to make it, um, to make it something that we're aware of and, and hopefully can act to uh, prevent. Students who believe they may be in an unhealthy relationship are encouraged to reach out to friends and visit some of the resources offered on campus. The Student Counseling Center here on campus that you can go to, um, and they, they have the SAVE project, which is focused on sexual assault, for so sexual assault victims. Conley Gilmore, Troy Trojan Vision News. Next week, all of Troy University students will get the chance to meet potential employers at the Fall Career Fair. However, on Thursday, Troy University's College of Education offered a major specific career fair to its outgoing seniors. Sarah Singletary has the story. Educators of the past, present, and future gathered on Thursday in Hawkins Hall for the Education Fair. Students met with representatives from over 20 school districts to discuss potential job opportunities and to get some interview experience. When you're in the real world, you know, we, we haven't had practice like that before. So like it's, I think it's, it's really awesome that, that Troy's letting us do this. Even if it's, we don't get it, like a job from this, it's just more practice for the future after we graduate. Alabama, Georgia, and Florida school districts were represented at Thursday's fair. And one Alabama employer says the Troy students she has met are job ready. Oh, they come in prepared, well, well trained, um, knowing what we like to do. Instructional strategies is very big with the Pike County school systems. So they come in with background knowledge. They come in with knowing different strategies and implementing those strategies. So we're very pleased with the quality of the level of preparedness that the students at Troy are being prepared with. And one student credits that level of preparedness to her instructors. They have prepared us more than anything, um, just to even be able to talk to them. We feel confident, um, resume skills, they taught us all of this. So really today is just all about getting your name out there and feeling comfortable in your own shoes and whatnot. Troy University is the college home for students from all over the world, including as far as Pakistan. And some of those students from Pakistan had the chance to teach their fellow students about their homeland at this past week's ISCO meeting. Alex Roberson has the details. So the purpose tonight was to give our Pakistani students the opportunity to um, educate the Troy community and share their experiences from their country in Pakistan and their wonderful culture, um, especially to get rid of some of the stereotypes that maybe Americans and other international students have about Pakistan and give them the opportunity to really show off their flavors of their country. Students from Pakistan were able to share their country's history and culture. That ISCO gave us the opportunity today to present my country, my nation, to uh, an American audience. It was indeed a thrilling experience and I got the chance to share my culture, my values with such a big audience and clear, and more importantly, I got the chance to clear any misconceptions that uh, people here had. And, um, and I personally believe after the uh, presentation that a lot of misconceptions and the stereotypes that they already had uh, have been uh, cleared. The students 
spoke about the diverse music played in Pakistan, the fashion, and even the tasty foods. I actually have had Pakistani friends and I still learned a lot tonight at the presentation. I didn't realize how diverse the country is itself. There's so many different regions and each region has its own beautiful culture and wonderful food and I think that's probably the most important thing I took away from tonight is they're just a great country of people but they're all unique. Alex Roberson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Recently, Troy's National Association of Black Journalists made a donation to the Boys and Girls Club of Pike County to pay for flag football uniforms. Well, on Wednesday, the NABJ got to see their donation put to use as the club played their first game in the new uniforms. Jalen Bivens has the details. Wednesday evening, the Boys and Girls Club of Pike and surrounding counties held its first flag football game of the season. They hosted the Boys and Girls Club of Ozark, and although they didn't have their new uniforms, they still had tons of energy. Oh yeah, the, the kids were really excited about it, and, uh, and also because of um, a sponsorship and donations, we're able to, we've just placed an order for the football team to have jerseys, so they're going to be able to wear jerseys within the, the next couple of weeks. Buchanan says that these games are helping keep the kids out of trouble, and head coach Quentin Blocker goes on to say it's helping them with teamwork. Good, our, our teamwork, our team chemistry, you know, uh, of course everybody likes to win at the end of the day, nobody likes to lose, and uh, one of the biggest problems is everybody wants to be the star, you know, so everybody wants that shine, which is, which is natural, but we just got to teach the players that you got to, sometimes you have to play your role, you know, and uh, just be a team player, don't be selfish, and if everybody can get clicking on all cylinders, you know, we can come out on top. The flag football team is helping teach the children of all ages the fundamentals of football and the importance of playing on a team. We are teaching the fun fundamentals of football to both boys and girls from age 9 through 14. We're also teaching uh, good sportsmanship and keeping a good attitude while, while playing, whether we win or lose. Coach Blocker would also go on to say that their main priority is school first and then football. Is our main focus is academics at the end of the day. And uh, when school let out, we only have a few hours here. And like I said, academics come first, so we're going to take care of that first always. And uh, football practice comes second. So, I mean, you have kids leaving sometimes getting picked up, but it's just a part of it. But um, we're going to continue to work, going to continue to practice hard and uh, keep our grades up. That, that comes first, like I said. And uh, we're going to look forward to having the rest of the season go as we plan. The Pike County Boys and Girls Club will fall short of victory but they're already looking forward to their next game on Saturday against Dopton. Jalen Bivens, Troy, Trojan Vision News. We're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, we'll see a creative way Troy University students are helping fight hunger in Pike County. That and more after this. If you're a true Troy Trojans fan, you'll refuse to miss Trojan Sports Network. Join Ryan Renfro and Jamal Kennedy in the Troy Trojan Division Sports Grill. Game reviews, previews, and exclusive interviews with the coaches, players, and playmakers of all Troy University's athletic teams. Thursdays and Fridays, 7 and 11, or stream it online via our YouTube page. Don't miss Trojan Sports. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Students eat meals in the dining hall every day, but how much input do they really have in what is being served? Each semester, students get the chance to voice their opinions about the dining services at Troy at the Food Advisory Council meeting. Samantha Charles shows us some of the changes that have come from these meetings. Over sushi and socializing, members of the Student Government Association and the student body met with the Food Advisory Council of Troy, or FACT, to express their concerns, whether positive or negative, and offer suggestions to improve the dining services. It gives the students the ability to have direct communication with our managers, and they get to, you know, talk back and forth and 
and then we students get to know what's going on, on our side and we get to know what's going on, on their heads and then we're able to like find middle grounds and walk away with like yes we can do this. Today we're going to be discussing different things changes that have been made as far as the dining services go, the food court, what students are liking, what students are disliking, and sort of be able to come together with um, all the retail location managers as well as the church and dining managers. Not only do these meetings benefit the students' overall dining experience, they also help the dining staff address problems directly. Our managers feel much more like, okay, we can get this happening, we can accomplish this because they have it straight from the student's mouth and it's not word of mouth and, you know, sometimes rumors get a little out there. But with having this, our managers are able to know exactly what's going on and they're able to know, like, what they want on the main menu more, what they don't want anymore, um, areas where our service is lacking, things like that. And so our managers have an like, exact list to take back to their offices. And if you haven't noticed any changes, think again. The lines in some of our food areas getting shorter. For example, we have in Trojan Dining, they put two fried chicken lines because on Friday it's very popular. So they recognize that it's a very popular time, it's lunch time, and so they chose to make it two lines to make it more smooth for students to be able to come through. And that's just one of the improvements that I've been able to see. The next fact meeting is scheduled for next semester. <laughs> Samantha Charles, Troy, Trojan Vision News. There are many children out there who go hungry for any number of reasons. And while those children might get meals throughout the week at school, during the weekend, they don't have that option. Rachel Wilkerson shows how Troy students are giving them a chance to avoid hunger. Troy University's Freshman Forum partners with a local organization, Head Start, to provide meals for children at home. Coordinator of the Office of Civic Engagement, Jonathan Seelan, explains what the program is. At Pet for Kids is a program that our office, along with Freshman Forum, uh, puts together um, each year. And what we do is we pack um, backpacks full of supplemental food items for kids uh, in our community um, to kind of get them over maybe any meal gaps that they would experience in the weekend. And if you're curious about how the program got started, well. This is something that Olivia Melton, our SGA president, brought with her from from high school, so uh, this is our fourth year doing uh, the program. The food items used for the program are donated by organizations on campus. Each backpack contains a main course, two snacks, two fruits, and items for breakfast. These backpacks can help ease the financial burden on families and are given to 120 children every other Friday. And one volunteer explains how helping out with Backpack for Kids has made an impact on her. The benefits that we'll see out of it is just so nice and to know that we can do such a small thing for the community is a great feeling. If you would like to make a donation, all you have to do is contact a member of Freshman Forum. Their page can be found on troy.edu. Rachel Wilkerson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. It's time for our last break. When we return, we'll learn how golfers can help support Troy University. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Daniel Smith. He's an expert in domestic and international economics. But his proudest achievement is connecting with his students and helping them accomplish more than they ever thought possible. That's the warrior spirit, and it's alive and well at Troy University. Feel it at troy.edu slash spirit. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Golfers will have an opportunity to play around and help out Troy University at the same time. We'll learn more about the Chancellor's Golf Tournament in this week's Trojan Talk. Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Today we'll be learning about how people can help Troy University and scholarships by playing a little golf. And my guest today joining me is Bronda Denison, uh, Director of Annual Giving here at Troy University, to talk a little about the Chancellor's Invitational Golf Tournament. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. And uh, 
Tell us a little about this tournament. Obviously, an opportunity for the golf lovers out there, uh, whether they're alumnus or just friends of the university, to help out Troy University. We have the Chancellor's Golf Tournament annually, always in September, and it will be held at the Robert Trent Jones Golf Course in Prattville, Alabama. We will have both courses running, the Senator and Legislator, um, but this is an annual event for us, and all proceeds go to the Troy University Athletic Ministry. So it's a great, great thing to give to. And so uh, an opportunity to play some golf, but help give funds to the university. And so, and so I guess, why is it so important for individuals out there, whether they're alums, whether they're friends of the university, to, to make a contribution to the school? It's very important because Troy University Athletics Ministries is, is a wonderful fund to give to. And if, it's, if you're an individual player and you want to play, um, we'll have some spots that we're trying to fill a team mm -hmm. and, and that looks good to come on and we'll, we'll fit you in a team. But um, not only do we need teams, we need sponsorships as well. We okay. would like, our goal is to get a whole sponsorship per hole um, this year. And hopefully, we're hoping we can do that because all the money goes to the ministry's fund. Okay. And uh, if someone is interested in becoming a sponsor, we'll, we'll talk more about the players, how they get involved. Let's focus on the sponsors right now. Uh, what are you looking for? Uh, who can be a sponsor? Anyone can be a sponsor. Okay. And, and what we do is we'll have signage. You will have a, a, big, a big sign on e at each hole representing your business, your company that you represent. Um, it's just a, it's a good way to advertise for your business. Mm -hmm. And then if you come and you play, you're going to network with other businesses and individuals. And so, uh, and what kind of, I guess, the, the, what's the, the vehicle there? How can they to become a sponsor? What do they need to do? How do they need to contact? And what's the mechanism involved to, to becoming a sponsor, being a part of this? So. Okay, about three months ago, we mailed out, of course, we have the mm -hmm. golf tournament brochures. Okay. But this brochure is also online, available okay. online. You can go to our website, website and sign up for it. Um, you can call our office and I'll give you the number is 334-670-5843. You can call me, um, Faith Ward. Her last three numbers are 3397 or Meredith Welch and her last three numbers are 5924. Yeah. Either one of us ladies will, will take it over the phone and then you could fill out the brochure where we send you and we'll get you signed up to be a sponsor. All right, and then let's talk about players. Uh, obviously, you're, you're talking about playing at uh, Robert Trent Jones in Prattville and uh, I'm not a golfer, but I've been to the course and it's an impressive place yes. just to look mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of people uh, get a chance to, to play on one of those it's courses beautiful. up there. It's a beautiful course. So uh, once in a lifetime, maybe opportunity a great opportunity for people to, to play some golf on, on a great golf course up there. Absolutely, and it'll be on a Wednesday um, registration. If you're not already registered mm -hmm. or you show up at 11, we feed you lunch, a okay. great lunch. Um, and then the tee off's at 1. Okay. And then you come back in. Usually the guys are coming in about 5.30 or 6, and we have all, more food, <laughs> and then we have door prizes. So it's a fun day, and it's a beautiful venue. Beautiful, beautiful venue, and you get to play on those courses. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got the door prizes there, so obviously an opportunity for the fun. Mm -hmm. But there are also a couple of competitions involved as well. In addition to just competing and winning in a tournament, there's a couple of uh, little small competitions that you've got mm -hmm. going on with that. Tell us what you got there as well. So We also give prizes, and like I said, we're doing two courses. Okay. There we have longest to the pin. Okay, the longest, longest, longest drive. Longest drive and closest, closest to the, to the pin. pin. Okay. We have mm -hmm. for each course. Okay. so we will do those those two prizes. So there is there is competition, and then at the end we give first, second, third place prizes to to all of those teams, to these teams mm -hmm. that are involved there. Absolutely. And, and and you mentioned that earlier, but this is a point to reiterate. Uh, Teams can sign up, but an individual can sign up as well. You're not Absolutely. limited to having a team sign up for this. So. Even on the brochure, it breaks it down where individual is, you know, 250 a person, okay. a whole sponsorship is 500, okay. and a team of four with a sponsor is called a cardinal sponsorship, and that's 1,200. Okay, so an opportunity for a lot of those different options there. If you want to be a sponsor and play, and just play, or be an individual and play, so you can yes. do that. So mm -hmm. it's out there. And once again, if they want information, where can they find out this information? The, the website. The so. website's choi.edu okay. backslash Chancellor's Cup. All right, and we see there on the screen there. It's got the information that that individuals uh, who want to find out about how to play in the tournament or how to be a sponsor is located on that site. And uh, once again. 
again, uh, when and where will the, will the tournament be? The tournament will be held Wednesday, September the 28th at uh -huh. Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail in Prattville, Alabama. All right. Well, here's hoping that uh, get a good turnout and maybe uh, some, some additional sponsors and uh, some funds to help out a, a worthy cause here on the Troy University campus. Very worthy campus. cause. So, yes. uh, Bronda, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so, so much. And thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk. And that's what happened on the third week of August 2016. To find out what's happening throughout the week, you can tune in to Troy Trojan Division News at 5, 6.30, and 10.30 Monday through Friday or anytime by following us on Twitter at Troy TV News. We hope you join us again next week for another edition of Troy Trojan Division Weekly. Have a good week.